Hey everyone, and welcome to the Balanced Bodies Blueprint. I am your host, Vinny Russo. And I am your co-host, Dr. Aaron Stansfield. And we're shifting gears from all the conventional fitness narrative you hear on most fitness podcasts, as our main emphasis lies in preventative healthcare, adopting a holistic approach to nutrition, and challenging the traditional views on various fitness topics. Our mission with this podcast is to provide you with the information you need to achieve optimal health. And on today's podcast, I will be going at this solo and I'm diving into a topic that I feel is very critical for everyone to sort of understand, especially if they want to take control of their own health and their own body composition. It's going to be about figuring out the calories that you need and the macro breakdown specifically for you. Now, you probably heard about a bunch of these calorie calculations, these calorie equations like um, the Harris Benedict, the Mifflin St. George. There's a ton of them out there. Uh, but the issue is, is that our bodies aren't calculators and they definitely don't operate like simple math equations. So why are we using that to determine what we actually need? So if you are an individual that wants to take care of their own health, or if you are a trainer, or if you are a nutrition coach and you're doing this and you're just using calculators, that is the wrong way to do it. So today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit beyond the basics here, and I'm going to walk you through how to really dial in your own calories. You could use those equations, right? You could use them to, to give you an idea of where maybe you should be, but the most important factors really come into your actual current diet habits, your diet history, how much you're moving throughout the day, your current body composition, and there's other variables that you need to look at that calorie calculators don't account for, All right? The most common mistake is really just solely relying on these calorie equations. And it's funny because like you get these people on like TikTok and they're doing lives or they're doing Instagram lives and like, give me your stats, your body stats and how often you work out. And they pretend like they cracked this code to nutrition because they could just plug some numbers into a calculator. And the general population look at these people and they're like, oh, well, they have helped so many people that they can help me, this must actually work, but they're not taking into account any individualization. Like I said, like, sure, these like the Mifflin St. Jor and the Harris Benedict equation, they could give you a ballpark number for your BMR and then add in like an activity multiplier and get your total daily energy expect expenditure. But if you're just stopping there, and this is for people using calorie calculators, coaches, trainers, whoever, if you're just stopping there, then you're doing a massive disservice to yourself or to your clients, right? These equations, they're not accounting for your actual eating habits, right? Your, your actual diet history or, or even where your metabolism is currently sitting. So if you're someone and you've been starving yourself, let's just say on 1100 calories per day. And then you suddenly jump up to 2000 calories because some equation told you that you should do that. It's not that you're, you're clueless. It's that you're reckless in doing this, right? Your body has been through metabolic adaptation where it's going to basically slow its metabolism down and you're going to feed it a thousand calories more than, than what it's currently sitting at. You're going to gain weight. You're going to gain body fat. And you can't expect things to actually go smoothly if you're just relying on this type of calculation, because you really got to, you got to make the distinction. Like this isn't math class. This is human physiology. So then what's the alternative here? What can you do to ensure that you're giving yourself the right calories that your body currently needs? What is your location of your calories, right? What is your maintenance? Because think of it like the GPS. And I give this example all the time. Think of it like a GPS. It can't give you the best route if it doesn't know your location, right? So your location is knowing, well, what are you currently eating? What's the alternative here? What do we have to do? You have to start understanding your own dietary habits, um, your own dietary history, right? What have you been doing for the past three months, six months, or even a year? Like, are you a yo-yo dieter? Have you been on this like low carb craze for the past, you know, 16 months, have you been, you know, doing extensive cardio to try to make up for your weekend warrior nonsense? Are you currently under eating? Or are you currently overeating, right? These questions will help you figure out not just where your metabolism might be, but also your relationship with food, which is what you can utilize moving forward and really, really dialing in your nutrition. 
I see it all the time. A lot of trainers, a lot of coaches, they're going to jump right into calorie deficits because the person coming to them and paying them wants to lose body weight, right? They want to lose scale weight. They want to lose body fat. And they do this without even realizing that the body needs to adjust and and repair itself, especially after long periods of metabolic stress of being constantly in a calorie deficit. And most people who have trouble with losing body fat never allow themselves to fully take a big break and allow their body to heal, right? If you're spending more time in a deficit than you do out of a deficit, you're doing this whole dieting thing wrong, allowing your body to really establish a a really good maintenance for you to live life, enjoy yourself, and and have a body that you're comfortable in is going to be key here. But you can't do that if you're constantly dieting. You, you just can't. So what do you have to take into account? Well, we got to take into account, you know, what are you currently eating now? We got to figure out how many calories you're eating. And so how do you do this? You have to track. You have to track what you're putting in your mouth. That's the only way to know. Oh, well, that's too much. Really? Let's figure out what you're doing so we know where to go. You got to figure out your location, what you're currently eating on average over seven to 14 days, right? That's what you do it for. You track for seven to 14 days. That'll help you get a little bit comfortable with tracking your food. It'll it'll get rid of some of those uh, some of those fetal pains, right? Those growing pains that that you initially get with trying to learn something new. You do this for seven to 14 days, you figure out your average of what you're eating. And you compare that to, well, what's happening with your body, right? Are you staying stagnant? Then that's your maintenance. If you dropped a little bit, maybe you were just focused because you were focusing on food. You probably chose more mindful decisions. So maybe you adjusted your diet a little bit and you actually were losing weight, right? But at least we know those amount of calories are in a little bit of a calorie deficit or you're gaining weight because if you're gaining weight, that means you're probably in a little bit of a surplus, but we can get a better idea of where you currently are by tracking what you currently do. Now, once you have this maintenance, you have to decide, well, is this too few calories? Is this too much calories? Uh, Am I okay with giving myself some time to feed up? Do I need to go right into a deficit right away? This is something that you're going to have to decide on what to do. I'm going to say right off the bat that if your calories seem to be on the lower side, you do not go into a deficit. You allow yourself some feeding. Take three to six months to feed your body up. And you could do this without gaining a ton of body fat. You just have to pay attention to what your body's doing in response to what you're feeding it. This is where coaches come into play. This is where my company comes into play, right? Where I do all of this for you. I figure this out for you. I monitor you and I explain to you what we're doing, why we're doing it and where we're going. So then you have all those videos that you could always refer back to and you could say to yourself, well, this is what I need to do. And I need to do it because of X, Y, and Z. I want to teach you how to fish, not just give you the fish, right? I do give you the fish and I also teach you how to fish as well. But once you have that number, then it's like, all right, well, this is what I'm feeding myself. But what about my movement, right? What about my activity? Because your total daily energy expenditure isn't just going to be made up of your workout sessions. That has uh, the most minimal effect on what you burn per day, unless you're doing like Ironman training, or you're doing uh, multiple sessions, or you're doing marathon training. If you're just doing the average gym session, you're, it's, it has the minimal effect. The, the biggest effect is going to be your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, your NEAT. And this is one of the simplest yet most overlooked ways to help your body burn more calories. Just move more. That's it. And one way to really increase your overall NEAT is track your step count. Once again, Know sort of what you're doing. Track it. If you're at a desk job all day, okay, that's okay. Let's take an average of what you do. Just like we tracked your food for 7 or 14 days. During that time, let's track your step count. Let's see what you're getting. Maybe you might only be getting 3,000 steps per day. It's on the lower side, okay? But that's where your body currently is. That's what it's used to. So adding something like 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 steps for that day, that's very doable. But if I am like, hey, there's this... 10,000 steps per day rule, it's going to seem very overwhelming and you're most likely not going to hit it, which is going to basically deter you away and make you feel like you're a failure. Looking at this from perspective of what am I doing? What is my individual step count? Not what some arbitrary number is, right? Like what the fitness gurus tell you online, 10,000 steps per day at a minimum. No, let's take a look at what you're currently doing now and then let's add to that. 
because it's very feasible to do. And when you do it and you get more used to that, then you could add more on top of that. Now, on the flip side, if you're a highly active person, right, and you're getting in, let's just say 12,000 steps per day, that's going to give you a little bit more of a calorie burn and we could probably stay there, right? And we don't really have to adjust much with your overall need. The key will be to try to keep that 12,000 steps per day as you diet down because your body's naturally going to say, I don't want to move as much as you diet down. But this also gives you another tool that you can use instead of like cutting calories from food that you eat, you could increase your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. I call it unintentional movement, right? What are you doing unintentional? Yes, step counts and focusing on your steps, going for walks. That is intentional, but it's not like a cardio session. It's not a gym session. It's something that you can do as long as you walk. If you can walk, you can do it. I like using this if I don't want to pull calories from a client. We can increase your output. We won't decrease your input. We'll increase your output. And this will help you eat more while in a calorie deficit. So we could do that in two ways, eat less, or we could move more to help with that calorie deficit. So this is just another tool that you can use. But now when it comes down to, you know, really figuring out what you need and setting up your macros, this is where you need to try to get more data on yourself, right? So we got a decent amount of data figuring out where you currently were eating, right? We tracked over seven to 14 days, right? We tracked what you were eating. We took the average and we just, and we saw what was going on with your body. So we have around a maintenance. Let's just, let's just call it maintenance for simplicity here. The next thing, while we were doing that, we were tracking our step count. So we have like total daily movement that you do, right? We're also taking into account well, are you working out? Are you working out a couple of times a week? Are you doing cardio sessions? We're going to take that all into account. Okay. And the key with that, once again, is if we're trying to diet down, try to maintain that at a minimum of what you're currently doing. Now, if you are someone, and I want to preference this, if you are someone who, because I've had it before, if you're someone who does crazy amounts of cardio per day, uh, because you feel like you need to, uh, you feel like you'll get fat if you don't, well, we have to change that mindset. Cardio is a tool. It's not a necessity. And you need to, to really drive that home because it's something that we can use to help with the deficit, but it's not needed in order to get the best body composition. I think it makes it more efficient, but you do not need to do endless amounts of cardio to see your best body. To be honest with you, if you're doing endless amounts of cardio, you're never going to see your best body. You need to take that down and then you will see your best body. Um, but when we go into dialing in your macros, we then need to really figure out what your body fat percentage is. I always go off of an estimate body fat percentage of where I feel like your lean, your lean body mass is. You get people on there like, oh, you need one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Well, that doesn't work for everybody because if I have a client who's 350 pounds and he's morbidly obese, can't give him 350 grams of protein. It's not going to work like that. So I like to go off lean body mass because it gives you a more accurate number. Um, you also get people that are like, oh, well, you know, you hit a minimum requirement of like 40 grams of fat and then whatever else you have, fill the rest in with carbs. It's very simplistic. Those are not rules of thumb. Those are just people being fucking lazy, right? So what I need you to take into account is everyone is going to have different body fat percentages, different, different amounts of muscle mass on their body. So you need to figure out using, and this is where an equation can really help. You need to figure out how much protein they need. And you base that off of lean body mass, not total body weight. Anybody who ever tells you, oh, uh, we'll just do one gram of protein per pound of body weight. They're, it's, they don't know what they're talking about. They heard something and they just regurgitated it. Because if you ask them to explain it, they won't be able to. But how do you figure out your lean body mass? Well, you need to know your body fat percentage. There's multiple ways to do this. Uh, I think the Navy has a really cool, inexpensive, it's, it's actually free. It's a free way of trying to figure out or estimating your body fat percentage. And it goes off of circumferences of, of measurement. It'll take your, um, it'll take your height into account. It'll take like your neck circumference and your waist circumference. It'll also take in hip circumference on females, uh, whatever you could do that. You could do, um, a DEXA scan. You could do a bod pod. I wouldn't really do the bioimpedance, but if that's all you got, that's all you got. So you could use that and just remember it's probably not accurate, um, but it is going to be an inaccurate 
consistent gauge, right? <laughs> if that makes sense. Because if you see like you're at, I don't know, 21% body fat, and then you use that again, and you're at 17, we know you lost body fat percentage. It's just not accurate in terms of the number. So it, I wouldn't say use that for the lean body mass. I would say use more like that Navy stuff, Dexaxan, or, or uh, even Fit Body 3D. It's 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 accurate ish, but it's not something I'm going to put my uh, my life savings on. Just put it that way. Get your body fat percentage, and what you're going to do is this: you're going to take your current body weight. Let's just say. It's 150 pounds, and you're going to subtract it by your body fat percentage times your current weight again, and that'll give you your lean body mass, okay? And then this is what you can use to help set where your protein is going to be and your fats are going to be. So for example, I like to use anywhere from 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass. If you're someone who likes to eat more protein, aim towards the higher range. If you're someone who has a lot of body fat to lose or a lot of weight to lose, go towards the higher end. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're someone who's already lean, naturally stays lean, you're most likely going to be on the lower end of that. Okay. So just keep that in mind. When you're doing fats, you do the same thing, but you use different numbers. So I like to go, and this could be different, but me personally, I like to go anywhere from like 0.4 to 0.8 grams per pound of lean body mass. Now, depending on whether you like carbs or not, that's going to depend on where you kind of put your fats. If you want to have more carbs in your diet, you would go towards the lower end of that range. If you aren't a fan of carbs and you feel like they bloat you or whatever, you could go to the, with the fats, go towards the higher end of that range. Now, once again, that's a range that's not set in stone. It's just something that I like to use with my clients. When you're looking at what to do with carbohydrates now, you fill in those, the remaining calories with with carbohydrates. So after you set your protein and after you set your fat, whatever remaining carbohydrate, whatever remaining calories you have, that'll be for your carbohydrates. And then that's how you fill in your plan. But now it's like, all right, so where do I go from there? Like once we figured out the maintenance by tracking for seven to 14 days and we took the average, we figured out how much we were moving because we looked at how much we work out, the cardio we do, and we tracked our average step count per day. So we kind of know where to go from there. Um, we set our macros in stone because we use, we found our lean body mass by figuring out our body fat percentage. We set our protein between 1.2 and 2 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass. We set our fats from 0.4 to 0.8 grams per pound of lean body mass. And then we filled in the rest with carbohydrates. But now what do you do, right? That'll be a good starting point. Now you got to see if this stuff actually works. And the way you do that is by monitoring your biofeedback and biometric data. If your scale is moving in the right direction and you feel great, you're not hungry, you have a ton of energy, your digestion's good, you're not really stressed out, your sleep is pretty good, you're doing it right. Then, then don't fix something that's not broken and keep going with that. If you set up your macros and you're like, damn, like I'm really hungry, I, get, I wake up in the middle of the night because I'm really hungry. Um, you're feeling deprived. Maybe you're fatigued. Maybe you're just snapping at people. You're getting a little hangry. That means you need to probably adjust your macro breakdown. You probably need to adjust how many calories you're eating. But what are you actually looking at? Well, you want to look at how's your energy throughout the day. Um, when you wake up in the morning, do you have energy? Are you really, really tired? Do you not want to get out of bed with your workouts? Are you getting stronger? Do you feel like it's a fucking pain in the ass? It's like a burden. How's your digestion? Are you going to the bathroom often? Are you going too much? Are you going not at all? Overall stress, how are you feeling? Are you stressed out? How's your libido? Do you have a sex drive? Do you not? Because your diet's going to play into these and it's going to affect your biofeedback, which is exactly what I just said. Your biometric data could be moving in the right direction, but if your biofeedback is like, hey, I'm fatigued, I feel like shit, then why are you doing it? There's a quality of life that needs to come into play. Yes, there will be some sacrifices you need to make if you're trying to get to a certain body fat percentage or a certain body composition, but you should always have the diet complement your lifestyle. Never take away from it. Remember, it's not always about weight loss. It's not always about muscle gain. It's about creating a, a nutrition plan for you that you could live with and sustainably carry on. Now, there will be phases that you go through. There will be maintenance phases. There'll be feeding phases. There'll be dieting phases. That's fine. Just remember what I said earlier to make sure that you are spending more time out of a deficit than you do in. 
So to wrap up this episode, to really figure out how to dial in your specific calories and macros, remember, you could use equations to give you a ballpark idea. But what you really need to do is go with your current dietary habits because that's going to reflect where your metabolism really is. Then you could take an intermediate between the two. Yeah, you could blend them together. I'm perfectly fine with that. It's all going to be based on you and what you feel is best for you, right? So we, we, we track, we figure out what you're currently eating. We figure out where you want to go. We figure out how often you're moving throughout the week because when we're looking at dieting and by dieting, I don't mean just deficit. I, it could be gaining phase as well. When we look at this, the calories are going to be the most important. Right Then what comes next is going to be obviously be your protein intake. Those two are stuff that you're always going to want to know and stay consistent with. Fats and carbs are interchangeable. So we dial in your protein with figuring out your lean body mass and then using that range. We dial in your fats by knowing that lean body mass and using that range. And then we fill the rest in with carbohydrates. Then we run this and we stay with it. We give it time. We have patience. We allow our body to acclimate to what's going on to the new food intake, to the new macros, and we stay consistent with it. If you don't see results in 10 days, that's not long enough. Even a month is a decent amount of time to maybe see something, but you have to give it time. And then while you're giving it time and while you're letting your body acclimate, pay attention to your biofeedback. Track your biometric data. Daily weigh-ins. Weigh yourself every morning after you go to the bathroom with minimal clothing on. And you track that. This is not going to build some weird obsession with the scale. What it's going to do, it's going to give you the best data because then you take the average of those seven days and you compare it to the next seven days. And we see where the scale weight's going because you're going to have day-to-day -day fluctuations. It's going to give you data, especially if you're female, like when your monthly friend comes, do you gain weight before? Do you gain weight after? How long does it take you to lose that weight after? This is all data that you can use. And then you will be able to build a better relationship because you know, number one, you could appreciate the fluctuations. Number two, you can anticipate it going up or going down. And by how much based off of what you're doing in your experience, when you go out and have a night out with the girls, how much weight do you usually gain after, if any, and how long does it take for it to come off? You will have this and it'll build a better relationship because then you will be able to anticipate what your body is going to do and go through. So you don't freak out about it jumping up five pounds because you spent a weekend in the Hamptons. I don't know why I said Hamptons, but so you pay attention to your body and you allow it time to acclimate and then you decide where to go from there. If this seems like a lot of stuff, which honestly, it might feel like a lot of stuff, but it's the best way to do it. If it feels like a lot of stuff, hire someone to do it for you. It's what we do here at Balanced Bodies. And we have the testimonials and the results to prove that this shit works. If you have questions about this, just reach out. I'm always here to help people. I love answering questions. It helps me refine my expertise and it also allows me to help someone out. So the next time you feel like you want to go on a diet, remember, Figure out where you are so you know where to go. And that's all I got for today in this solo episode. And I will see you all next week. So on behalf of Balanced Bodies, we just want to say thank you for joining us on this episode of the Balanced Bodies Blueprint. We are committed to bringing valuable content. And if you enjoyed today's episode, we'd greatly appreciate it if you can take a moment and like it and leave a five-star review. On Apple, just go to the show, scroll down to the bottom and rate it there. If you're on Spotify, go to the show's page, click the three dots, and you can rate it there as well. And if you believe in the power of knowledge, share this episode on your social media to try and get the information out there to as many people as possible. And as you navigate your own path towards better health, remember that Balanced Bodies is forever in your corner. See you all next week. The podcast content may include discussions of medical topics and health-related information. However, the information provided should not be considered exhaustive or complete, and it should not be relied upon as a substitute for professional medical advice or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare providers with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment.